With striking beauty and undeniable talent, Elizabeth Taylor captivated audiences. As a precocious child actor and unforgettable leading lady, she played legendary female characters who embodied strength, integrity, and unapologetic femininity. Her career, which spanned six decades, earned her five Oscar nominations and two Best Actress wins. Along with her singular talent, Elizabeth was a savvy businesswoman. Her instinctive sense of her own worth led her to negotiate the first $1 million contract for an actor for her role in Cleopatra in 1963 which was completely unheard of. She was also the first celebrity to launch a hit fragrance brand and became the first female social entrepreneur. Throughout her life, Elizabeth possessed an abiding will to survive in the face of personal tragedy and an extraordinary capacity for love. She was married eight times to seven men, and her greatest joy in life was her family of four children, ten grandchildren, and four great-grandchildren. In 2011, Elizabeth died in Los Angeles at the age of 79. Elizabeth Taylor remains one of the world's most iconic women. Renowned for her independent spirit, enduring strength, and unwavering compassion, she has captured the hearts of millions. And in today's video, we are going to look at some of her famous jewelry that made the front page in all newspapers when it was auctioned by Christie's way back in 2011. The initial estimated price of all her jewelry was $35 million, and to the surprise of the many, the final revenue of the sale was $165 million. So, let's begin. Tenth on our list is the Prince of Wales brooch. Prince Edward gave Wallace the Prince of Wales brooch in 1935, and it is an important piece of jewelry which bears special meaning, since is the symbol of his royal status as the Prince of Wales, the heir to the throne of England, and demonstrates his commitment to her and his intention to make Wallace his future queen. The brooch was specially commissioned by Prince Edward and features three paveset diamond feathers, accented with baguette-cut diamonds, which are gathered together by a crown, the piece is set in platinum and 18k gold. After the death of the Duchess, the Prince of Wales brooch was purchased by Elizabeth Taylor at the Sotheby's auction for a price of over $623,000. Elizabeth and Richard Burton had been friends with the Duke and Duchess, and she often admired the brooch during her visits. When the brooch went on the auction block, Elizabeth intended to bid on the item for sentimental reasons since Richard Burton was born in Wales. It is said that the brooch is the first piece of significant jewelry that she had ever bought for herself. Ultimately, upon the death of Elizabeth in 2011, the Prince of Wales brooch was once again sold at Christie's auction of Taylor's jewelry collection for $1,314,500. Next on our list is the Burton Cognac Diamonds. In 1974, Richard Burton gave Elizabeth Taylor a cognac diamond ring and earrings by Van Cleef and Arpel for their 10th wedding anniversary. The ring is set with a modified pear-shaped fancy deep brownish orangey yellow diamond, weighing approximately 32.14 carats, within a circular cut diamond surround, the shoulders decorated with circular cut diamonds, mounted in gold-topped platinum and it was sold for a whopping price of $2,322,500. While the earrings each suspending a detachable modified pear-shaped fancy deep brown yellow diamond, weighing approximately 7.87 and 6.83 carats, within a circular and baguette cut diamond frame, to the circular and baguette cut diamond shield shaped surmount, mounted in gold, and was sold for $962,500. Elizabeth Taylor wore the brown diamond set that year to the Oscars. Eighth on our list is the Yellow Diamond Collection, a gift from Eddie Fisher for Elizabeth's 30th birthday in 1962. The first one is the Bulgari colored and white diamond flower brooch. Mounted and tremblant, designed as three variously shaped diamond flower blossoms, set with a circular cut fancy vivid yellow diamond pistol, weighing approximately 3.38 carats, and two smaller circular cut yellow and brown diamond pistols, enhanced by numerous circular cut brown diamonds, with circular and baguette cut diamond leaves and stems, mounted in platinum, which was sold for $1,142,500. The second one is this beautiful ring set with a Marquise cut fancy vivid yellow diamond, weighing approximately 2.62 carats, within a pear-shaped Marquise cut and circular cut diamond surround, mounted in platinum and was sold for $962,500. 
And the third one is this pair of magnificent earrings, each suspending a detachable modified pear-shaped fancy yellow diamond, weighing approximately 15.60 and 15.38 carats, to the circular cut, marquise cut and pear-shaped diamond cluster surmount, mounted in platinum and was sold for $1,650,500. Number 7. The Taylor Burton Diamond, and its keeper, the larger-than-life Elizabeth Taylor. While nearly all of her jewelry was well-publicized and momentous, arguably her most famous piece was the historic Taylor Burton Diamond. The rough stone was found in South Africa at a staggering 241 carats, and was cut into a pear shape at 69.42 carats by Harry Winston. Its first owner was Harriet Annenberg Ames. The woman about town found the diamond to be cumbersome, and she was scared to walk around New York with such a large and extravagant piece of jewelry visible. Rather than let it gather dust, Ames chose to auction off the diamond in 1969. A heated bidding war ensued with Aristotle Onassis, Harry Winston, Cartier, and Richard Burton buying for the diamond. Robert Kenmore, then the owner of Cartier, won with at a price of $1,050,000 at the time, a staggering price that was declared the first million-dollar diamond. Cartier coined the diamond, the Cartier diamond and intrigue stemmed from there. Shortly thereafter, Cartier heard from a disgruntled underbidder at the auction, one Richard Burton. Negotiating from a payphone at a hotel in England, Burton, his lawyer, and Cartier's owners, worked out a deal for Burton to own the diamond for $1.1 million. Burton was supposedly overheard telling his lawyer, I don't care how much it is, go and buy it. In return for the ownership transfer, Burton would allow Cartier to display the diamond in Chicago and New York. These exhibits attracted over 6,000 people a day to view the storied stone, a display of excess which the New York Times looked down upon. Three armed guards, two of which were decoys to throw off potential thieves, flew with the diamond from New York to Italy. Due to its gargantuan size, Taylor commissioned Cartier to turn the ring into a more wearable necklace. Taylor debuted the glittering stone at Princess Grace's 40th birthday party. Following her divorce from Burton in 1978, Taylor put the diamond up for sale and allocated the $5 million in proceeds towards building a hospital in Botswana. Number 6. The 40th birthday gift from Richard Burton, a sapphire, and diamond pieces of jewelry from her favorite jewelry maker Bulgari. The first one is the sapphire and diamond sotwa. Suspending a detachable paveset diamond octagonal pendant, set with a sugarloaf cabochon sapphire, weighing approximately 52.72 carats, with caliber-cut sapphire trim and bullet-cut diamond accents, to the paveset diamond neck chain, spaced by caliber-cut sapphire geometric links, mounted in platinum. And it was sold for $5,906,500. The second piece is sapphire and diamond trombino ring. Set with a sugarloaf cabochon sapphire, within a paveset diamond surround, the shoulders set with graduated baguette-cut diamonds, mounted in platinum. And it was sold for $866,500. Now. During the 50th anniversary of the Cleopatra in 2013, Jessica Chastain wears the sapphire sotwa and ring in the premiere as a remembrance of one of the greatest Hollywood star, and she looks stunning and fabulous. Elizabeth Taylor may not have been actual royalty, even if she was made a dame by Queen Elizabeth II, but she certainly was Hollywood royalty. It's no wonder that her film producer husband thought she needed her very own tiara and that's fifth on our list. The husband in question was Mike Todd, that's hubby number three, for those of you checking your scorecard. Elizabeth would later call him one of the two loves of her life, along with the tempestuous Richard Burton, of course. Todd was wealthy in his own right, and he loved to lavish jewelry on his movie star wife. The tiara was created in the late 19th century. Old mine-cut diamonds are set in platinum and gold, and shaped into alternating scroll and latticework elements. Todd gave the tiara to Taylor in 1957, the year that they married. Here's Taylor herself, writing in Elizabeth Taylor. My love affair with jewelry, describing the gift. When he gave me this tiara, he said, you're my queen, and I think you should have a tiara. I wore it for the first time when we went to the Academy Awards. It was the most perfect night because Mike's film Around the World in 80 Days won for Best Picture. It wasn't fashionable to wear tiaras then, but I wore it anyway because he was my king. Sadly, Todd and Taylor weren't king and queen of Hollywood for long. Todd died tragically in a plane crash barely a year after the two were married. 
The diadem was auctioned in 2011 with an estimated price between $60,000 to $80,000, but it was sold at a whopping $4,226,500. The iconic Taj Mahal mausoleum, located in the Indian city of Agra, is considered one of the most beautiful buildings ever designed. The marble structure boasts a history that's steeped in the timeless love between Emperor Shah Jahan and his wife. And to know that a diamond went on to be called Taj Mahal speaks to the immense historical significance the gemstone has with some of India's famous ancient emperors. The Taj Mahal diamond is thought to have been gifted by the emperor to his son, who then became the great emperor Shah Jahan between 1592 and 1666. Shah Jahan would later present the gift to his favorite wife, Mumtaz I Mahal. But when Mumtaz I Mahal died four years later, the emperor was overwhelmed with grief. He decided to pay the most befitting tribute to his wife by commissioning the iconic Taj Mahal mausoleum. It's this very majestic structure that inspired the naming of the Taj Mahal diamond. The Taj Mahal diamond traces its roots back to the 17th century. The heart-shaped, table-cut, diamond features inscriptions in both Persian and Arabic languages, clearly suggesting the possible origin of the diamond. One thing about the Taj Mahal diamond that has always fascinated gemologists is its meticulously done inscriptions, which were made long before the invention of the laser technology. Even more fascinating is that laser technology is hardly used for Arabic inscriptions. That goes to show how much craftsmanship went into developing the Taj Mahal diamond. Cartier set the diamond on a neck chain in 1972 that was made to resemble the silk cord it is thought to have originally had. Burton bought it for Taylor for her 40th birthday in 1972. With a pre-sale estimate of $300,000 to $500,000, it sold to an anonymous buyer for $8.8 .8 million. The Taj Mahal diamond is aptly named after the imposing Taj Mahal mausoleum. And just like this structure, this diamond has lived through time, carrying with it a rich heritage reminiscent of the ancient Indian civilizations. Number 3. The Krupp Diamond. Often referred to as the Elizabeth Taylor Krupp Diamond or simply as the Elizabeth Taylor Diamond, the Krupp Diamond is a magnificent stone with a fascinating history. One of several significant diamonds owned by Elizabeth Taylor, the Krupp diamond is Astor cut, with a fairly large coolet facet that indicates it was probably cut before the 1920s. Like the Koh-i Noor and the Archduke Joseph diamond, the Krupp diamond is believed to have originated in the Golconda region, as it is a type 2A, with exceptional optical transparency. The diamond got its original name from the Krupp family. It was sold to Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor as part of the estate of Vera Krupp, second wife of Alfred Krupp. She passed away in 1967, and the diamond went to its new owners in May of 1968. Burton purchased it at auction for a price of $307,000 and presented it to Taylor on board their yacht, while moored on the River Thames in London. The Krupp diamond can be seen in countless photos of Elizabeth Taylor, who wore it in a ring and called it her favorite piece. When Elizabeth Taylor passed away in 2011, the Elizabeth Taylor Krupp diamond was auctioned at Christie's. It sold for $8,818,500 to the South Korean conglomerate Eland. The selling price set a new record cost per carat for a colorless diamond. Number 2. The Ruby and Diamond Collection. What could be more romantic than an impromptu gift of rubies from your husband? This is precisely what happened to Elizabeth Taylor as she was doing laps in the pool of her rented house in the south of France, when Mike Todd, her third husband, walked onto the terrace and waved a red leather case with Cartier stamped in gold on the lid. The contents of the case matched the red leather, containing a suite of matchless rubies and diamonds set into earrings, a necklace, and a bracelet. There wasn't a mirror around, so Elizabeth uses the reflection of the pool to see herself. She was utterly heartbroken when he died, just 13 months into their marriage. When the necklace was auctioned on Elizabeth's death in 2011, the ruby set realized over $9,630,000 several times over its top estimate of $600,000. The ruby and diamond necklace by Cartier was sold for $3,778,500, the ruby and diamond ring by Van Cleef and Arpels was sold for $4,226,500, the pair of ruby and diamond ear pendants by Cartier was sold for $782,500, and the ruby and diamond bracelet by Cartier was sold for $842,500, although Elizabeth would have been thrilled at the amount of money raised for good causes, jewelry for her was not about the material value, but the stories behind it. In her telling of the story of the ruby suite, it is clear she never lost her naive delight and pleasure she derived from her collection.
Number 1 is the Emerald and Diamond Suite Collection. Elizabeth Taylor's Bulgari Emerald Suite consists of an emerald necklace, emerald and diamond pendant, matching set of earrings, emerald ring, and a bracelet. She wore the pendant as a brooch as well. Some of the emeralds in Taylor's set were from the Grand Duchess Vladimir in Russia. The suite was a gift from Richard Burton, her then-husband. He acquired it after several trips to the Bulgari boutique on the Via Condotti in Rome, from 1962-1967. Richard Burton gave her the emerald and diamond brooch as an engagement present and necklace as a wedding present. Earrings, a bracelet, and a ring followed. Of their time together in Rome, Richard Burton famously quipped, I introduced Liz to beer, and she introduced me to Bulgari. Taylor was given a choice between two spectacular emerald necklaces. I tried on the huge one, then the smaller ones, the huge one, then the smaller one. By this time we had been joined by Bob, a dear friend, and Richard's dresser for years. Richard asked him which he preferred. Bob couldn't decide either. I tried them one more time and said, Richard, I think I like the smaller one. Bob said, Mr. B, you can hardly get girls like that no more. The complete set was sold for a combined price of approximately $23 million. From the mid-1980s until her death, Elizabeth's greatest role was that of an activist. In a society paralyzed by fear, she used her fame to shine a light on the injustice and ignorance surrounding the HIV-AIDS epidemic. She co-founded AMFER and founded the Elizabeth Taylor AIDS Foundation, receiving many awards for her advocacy, including the Legion d'honneur, the Presidential Citizens Medal, and the Jean Herschelt Humanitarian Award at the 65th Academy Awards. In 2000, Queen Elizabeth II named her a Dame Commander of the Order of the British Empire. Touch it, stroke it and undress it. it was a pleasure sharing the history and life of one of the most iconic film stars that has ever lived, 